Hey art nerds, it's been a while since we've done a marker tutorial together, so I thought with the cooler weather upon us and a lot of people home from work and school, this was a great opportunity for us to color something together. So I have a printable line art for my awesome art nerds over on Patreon. It's theirs for free. And if you'd like to color along with me today, you can join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosue. I'm going to be using a variety of alcohol markers to color this mainly Prismacolor Blick Studio markers and Copic markers, so feel free to grab whatever works best for you. So I'm going to start by doing a colored line art, and I have printed out my magical blue lines on Strathmore 300 series Bristol paper. So not their nicest paper, but not their worst paper by any means. I went ahead and I penciled it so you guys can actually see what I'm doing, and I used an HB lead for that. And I'm using the Tombow Furenosuke brush pins, both the neons and the regular colors. And what I really like about these brush pins is they are both alcohol marker safe and waterproof. So they basically cover the gamut of everything I would want brush pins to do. They also have a flexible nylon tip, which means you can render really, really fine lines and really nice heavier lines. So this is a simplified version of my colored line art. I'm not using as many colors as I normally might, but I also don't need to because for this illustration, I wanted a really simple you know, a really simple color palette. So before I even started inking, I thought about what colors I wanted to use in this illustration and I made some notes on a post-it and I used those notes to influence the colors that I select for the inking as well as the colors that I'm going to select to actually color the thing. So I wanted her to have a darker skin tone, so I'm using browns and blacks to ink her skin. And I wanted her to have, originally it was going to be cream colored hair, but I eventually went for um, blue ombre hair. So it starts out dark and gets lighter, and I'll show you guys how I do that towards the middle of the video. But, um, and I also wanted her to have like a uh, cream colored fur on her earmuffs and on her collar. So I'm inking that with brown and black. And then for her coat, I wanted it to be blue. So I'm using blue and black for that. So pretty simple. You can go with just one color if you like. Often when I'm doing colored line arts, I actually like to use three colors for each thing. The highlight, the actual color itself, and then the shadow color. And sometimes I'll even end up re-inking. And don't worry if you don't know exactly what colors you wanna use, you can always re-ink the piece a little bit later on so that it reflects those colors or don't even sweat it. Sometimes it's really cool to use an accent color for your inking instead of the actual local color. So this illustration started out as just a sketch in my sketchbook. I initially knew I wanted to do something winter or Christmas or holiday themed, and I wasn't really sure what. So I was just kind of doodling with a color pencil. I scanned what I, I scanned the resulting sketch, the one that I actually liked, because I did a few of them. And I noodled around with it in Photoshop just to kind of clean it up and, you know, adjust it. So a lot of my work, if you guys don't actually see me drawing it on camera, a lot of my work is kind of a combination of digital art and traditional art. And what I like about doing a lot of my sketching digitally is it allows me to resize things really easily instead of having to redraw and redraw and redraw and redraw. So it actually makes the workflow a lot quicker for me. And I point that out just because I feel like it's worth knowing that a lot of the stages of my work are done digitally. One of these days I'll get a tablet that's pretty decent at actually capturing that sketching stage of the process. And I'll be able to share that part with you guys as well. But for now, I find that both Photoshop and OBS tends to make my laptop, laptop run really poorly and really clunkily, so I choose not to share the sketching phase with y'all. So in an earlier tutorial, I talked about how when I'm sketching or inking for color, I call those like open inks or open line work. And I leave a lot of areas just kind of lighter than they would be if I was just sketching it or inking it for black and white. And this is particularly apparent in this particular illustration, like the corners of her mouth, I left those as open loops that I'm gonna color in with marker later on. Her eyelashes, I also left those open so that they feel a lot lighter and airier than if I used a lot of ink strokes to kind of render in lashes. And you can choose to ink it however you wish. It's really just a 
matter of what you think looks good in the moment. I'm not trying to say like, there's one way to do this and there's only one way because art is really subjective and it's all about what you like and what works for you. When it comes to rules in art, I mean, there are some, but it's mostly helpful to know the rules in art so that you can know when to use them and know when to break them. So after getting those initial local colors down, I'm just kind of going back in with some black and adding in some darker shadows. I really wish Tombow would add some more colors to their Futanosuke line. I would just love that. Anything, pastels, more muted tones, more dark colors, whatever you want to throw at as Tombow, I will buy it because I really like the Futanosuke colors and I'd really like some more subtle subdued tones or maybe even some lighter airier tones to use when I'm doing this kind of colored line art style and I know they like to market to hand letterers and I think those are colors that would be really popular with hand letterers and brush calligraphers as well. So once I finished inking, I allowed my inks to dry completely for 24 hours before erasing the pencils using a soft white vinyl eraser. I then scanned my liner and shared it over on Patreon. Here's the line art all cleaned up and ready to color. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to go through and swatch the colors that I'm going to be using or I'm thinking about using for this illustration on a piece of the same Strathmore 300 series Bristol paper. And this allows me to select colors with accuracy. Now, one thing I would recommend that I don't actually do is I would give the colors about 10 minutes to dry on your paper because some colors shift significantly between when they're still wet when you just put them down and when they've had a chance to dry completely. And even though they're alcohol based and alcohol tends to evaporate a lot quicker than water, they do still need that dry time for color accuracy. So the colors that I'm using in this illustration are PB95, PB65, PB213, Copic E49, and Copic E25. I'm using RO2, Blick 007, and Blick 036. I'm using PB53, and that's gonna be the skin shade, so it's that really nice violet color. For the background, I'm going to use PB202, PB134, and PB47. For the snowflakes, I'm using, oh, I'm sorry, an additional skin tone I'm using is E34, as well as PB78. I'm going to use B60, 551, and B32. B63, B24, 038, and B18 for the hair and for her jacket. I'm also going to use Blix Ultramarine to add the darker shadows. For her eyes, I'm going to use B quadruple zero, BG triple zero, PB46, PB37, BG09, and PB43. And I'll have everything written down and organized for you guys down in the description if you want to use these colors or similar colors in your illustration. But frankly, if you're coloring along with me today, you can use whatever colors you want. You can use whatever colors make your heart sing. And if you do decide to print this out and color it and you share it on social media, I'd love to see it. So make sure you tag me at NattoSoup, N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P, on any site that you happen to share it on. So now that I've got my colors all swatched and selected, I also like to reorganize them so that they're in the order that I'm probably gonna be using them in. And that makes it so much easier to just grab as I go. 
So I'm going to be working on a thicker paper today. Like I said, it is Strathmore 300 series Bristol paper. I actually don't really like coloring on marker papers because I find that those are really thin and flimsy and I can't do as many layers as I'd like. But thicker papers like cardstock or Bristol paper do tend to be pretty thirsty and they can be marker killers. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're coloring along and you're choosing your markers. If you don't mind running out of ink quickly, then a heavier paper is a great option option but if you really want to make those inks last and you don't care if you get a lot of layers a marker paper might be the best way to go so I wanted to create a clean border so I'm using MT white washi tape and I have to say and this is a bit of a spoiler for the end of the video it worked so well I've tried so many different kind of washi tapes and ways of masking off a border and the MT white washi tape did not tear the paper it didn't like kind of mess around with my ability to judge colors and it removed cleanly so check plus to that so for the background I'm starting out with the PB202 it's a really really light blue I was using a brand new Prismacolor colorless blender but it had a catastrophic fail on me and the entire brush nib came off so I ended up switching to a Copic one a little bit later on and I'm kind of creating this mottled background effect it's just supposed to look kind of like a snowy or a cold wintry day. So I'm going to do an entire layer. So the whole piece of paper minus our girl using the colorless blender and our PB202. So once that initial layer had a chance to dry, I'm going back over it with PB202 again, but this time I'm also blending in PB134, which is a slightly darker blue, and into that I'm blending in PB47. And I'm going to be blending the darker color out, so when I'm using PB134, I'm blending it out with PB202, the lighter blue, and when I'm using PB47, I'm blending that out with PB134, and that's just to kind of get a nice soft transition in between the colors I don't want it to be overly distracting I'm not really going for like a super painterly effect here I'm going for a very soft kind of watercolory effect and I'm going to do this over the whole sheet of paper Thank you. 
Next, I'm using a spray bottle full of 99% isopropyl rubbing alcohol and I'm spritzing to get the colors. To, so this will act like a solvent. It kind of acts like colorless blender. It's gonna get the colors to kind of blend into each other. It's gonna push some of the colors towards the back of the paper and it's just going to soften the transitions overall. I'm also doing some like slower, lazier squirts to get the bigger droplets. And now I'm gonna start just sprinkling it with the rubbing alcohol. So we get these rubbing alcohol circles and that's kind of, going to kind of lend into the impression of snowflakes a little bit later on in the illustration. Gave the background a chance to dry and now I'm starting in with her eyes and I'm starting in with the shadow color for the eye whites. So I'm using B quadruple zero from Copic and then I'm gonna start actually coloring in her eyes and I was going for kind of a teal color. So I'm starting with BG triple zero from Copic and I'm also using that same color for the snowflake and I'm also using it as a shadow color on the eyes. And while that dries, I'm actually going to, cause she has a darker skin complexion and I found that with watercolor and alcohol markers when I'm rendering people with darker complexions, it's easier for me if I kind of establish the blush and the shadow colors before I apply the skin tone because often blush and shadow colors are lighter than what we would end up with with the skin tone and it can kind of cause patchiness with the skin tone. So I'm starting with Copic's RO2. Then I'm moving on to Blix 007. And it looks a little strange just on the white of the paper, but it's gonna make sense once we start adding in the skin tone. And then for the shadow color, I'm using PB53, which ended up being a lot warmer and redder. I was kind of going for like a cartoony shadow color, but I should have gone a little bit bluer with this than I actually did. And this is a good opportunity to show you guys where I'm going to add blush where I'm going to add shadow because it might become a little bit more difficult to see when we're working with the actual skin tones since some of those colors tend to be very close to each other and I do tend to blend them out a lot. This is a good opportunity for you guys to actually see where I like to apply shadow and where I like to apply blush when I'm rendering cartoony figures. While that's drying, I wanted to add a little bit of shadow to the whites of the eyes. So I'm using Blix Horizon Blue to do that. So for her skin, I'm starting with a base skin tone of Copic E34 and I'm applying that everywhere their skin. And I'm gonna do two layers of it because the first layer often comes across as kind of patchy, especially when we're coloring a larger illustration like this one. If you're coloring along at home, I would recommend you don't work as large as this. I often work quite small, so it's fun to like really blow things up and work larger. And here's the second layer and you guys can see it really helps cover a lot of that patchiness and it just kind of fills in the skin tone a lot better. So next I'm going in with Prismacolor PB95, so a slightly darker brown. This is why I swatched everything. And this is also why I work using multiple brands because honestly, when it comes to alcohol markers, especially for darker skin tones and browns and hair colors, some brands just don't have the right colors for me to be able to render the sort of things I wanna color. So it's nice to have a few brands and all of them kind of offer different things. Next, I'm going in with PB65, so an even slightly darker brown, not a whole lot browner. And I'm trying to work while everything's still wet because everything's gonna kind of blend a little bit more smoothly. And I don't have to spend as much time going back with the previous color and blending things out. Then I'm gonna go in with Copic E49, and I'm starting to add in and blend out more of the shadows so that we can create more definition and more volume on her face. And I kind of envisioned her as a chubby cheeked, very adorable girl. So that's kind of what I'm going for with how I'm modeling the face and how I'm adding in the shadows. Then I'm going back over with 007, Blick 007, to kind of reestablish some of that blush. And I almost wish I'd gone in with like a pinker color than that because it would have been a lot cuter. 
I'm applying another layer of our PB65 because I realized it didn't, her face didn't have quite as much shadow, quite as much definition as I would have liked. So I'm going in and adding that. And something you should consider is that alcohol markers like watercolor and acrylic, uh, well, especially like watercolor, they dry a little bit lighter than they go down. So that's why I suggested when you're swatching that you give it a chance to dry before you judge your colors. And it's also important to keep that in mind when you're rendering, especially skin tones where we kind of, kind of freak ourselves out, that it is gonna dry a little bit lighter and a little bit closer. So I added in freckles with PB213, E25, and E49. And I'm using the, it, it's the Copic Colorless Blender, but any colorless blender would work for this in areas where the skin tone kind of got into her bangs, into her eyelashes, and I'm just kind of using it to clean it up because what it's going to do is it's not going to remove it, but it pushes that color to the back so it's not as noticeable. So for her eyes, I'm starting with PB46 and adding in a little bit of a shiny using our colorless blender. And one of the reasons I really like brush tips is it makes coloring so much faster. And if you have a light, delicate hand and you're working with a foam rubber brush nib like Wicopic or Blick or Prismacolor, you can actually get in there and do some really, really fine details. So next I'm going in with PB37, a slightly darker aqua to kind of start implying where the irises would be. And I blend that out with the PB46, our slightly lighter aqua, just to kind of soften the transition between the two colors. Then I'm going in with BG, no, that is not, that is PB43. So it's an indigo color. It just looked like a blue green there to add in a bit more shadow to her eyes. And then I'm going in with BG09, blending our indigo out just a little bit and adding a little bit more depth and dimension. And then once that dried, back again with the PB43, our indigo color continuing to add in depth and shine and dimension. And frankly, when it comes to eyes, you could really go in and add a whole lot of detail. So I'm going in with BG000. So it's a much lighter color. It's gonna push some of that color back and make it look like there's a bit of a reflection in the eyes. So for the cream color on the pom-poms and on the fur in her hair, I started with PB24 which is a really, really light, it's like brick beige. And the color initially when I swatched it looked very gray and it dried very creamy. So that's what I mean by give it time to dry before you judge it. And I'm using kind of a spronging, sprouncing motion to kind of give the impression of like shearling fur. And I'm doing two layers of the same color back to back. So basically I'll finish both sides and then go back and <laughs> reapply it starting at the side that I started with initially. And you guys can kind of see that spronging motion in action. That's why, again, the foam rubber brush nibs are so great because they can actually take this kind of abuse without turning to just total and utter garbage and mush. So next I'm using PB78, so a slightly darker creamy color and kind of blending my first layer out a little bit with our previous color, PB24. And I'm basically gonna use this technique on all of the fur on her outfit. And you guys can really see the brush marks. I've been really trying to work more with utilizing the brush on these markers for texture and letting that come through into the illustration instead of just coloring something, you know, very methodically coloring in the whole thing. It's a lot easier and a lot more fun to just let the brush do a lot of the work, similar to with watercolor. So 
once that's dried, I'm going in again with the same color, PB28, so we can get a slightly darker tone. Because that's one of the cool things about alcohol markers is you can get about three layers of color out of them. So you really don't need a million colors to be able to achieve what you want. You just need to be able to strategically layer them and have a few good lighter and darker colors to just kind of help blend things out. And then to add in some final shadows, I'm using Blix 093. So that's putty and it's a bit of a grayer, more desaturated color that actually works really well with creating shadows on the shearling fur. And as I go, I am going to kind of go back into areas and fix things and tweak things and readjust things as I kind of notice like, oh, there isn't enough contrast or things aren't popping enough here. So next I'm going to work on the hair and she has so much hair and I wanted the ombre to go from dark to light starting at the top so that means with the way I think about hair we're going to start with the light which is going to be at the bottom and I'm starting with Blix 551 and re honestly rendering her hair killed like three markers so I need to order some marker refills but that's kind of going into what I was telling you guys about earlier so the next color I'm going well I layer that blue color and then um, I go back in with Copic B32 which is a slightly darker blue so I really love thirstier papers because they really allow me to do a bunch of layers build up a bunch of colors there they really allow for marker effects and I find that marker paper doesn't really allow that I can only get like three layers on marker paper However, these thicker, thirstier papers, although they allow for lots of blending, will really drain your markers. So it kind of becomes a payoff between what are you looking for stylistically and what are you willing to put up with? What are you willing to sacrifice in order to achieve that? And in this instance, it means I got to refill my markers pretty regularly. So then I'm going in with B24 and I actually happen to have B24 in both a Copic Sketch and a Copic Chow. So if you see me switch between the two, it's the same color. It's just in a different format. And I'm trying to blend the colors out so that we get that softer ombre transition using the previous color. So with B24, I blended that out with B32. And I'm kind of working on both sides of the head at the same time just to try and keep things pretty even. And if you're looking for a fun tutorial on hair coloring and hair rendering techniques, I have several for you guys. My favorite is the rainbow hair tutorial where I use the pastel sketch markers to render rainbow unicorn hair. And that one's really cool. But I also just have some like kind of basic selecting good colors to color hair with, how to color hair, how to color different hair textures. I have all kinds of really neat marker tutorials that I hope you guys will check out. I'll link those for you guys down in the description below. So I'm going to take a break and get in and do her eyelashes, starting with our lightest color, Blick 551. And I want her eyelashes to really kind of pop against her hair and against her skin. So I'm going with a lighter blue color for this. And I'm kind of taking my time and gently rendering them in so I don't get a lot of bleeding. So even though I'm basically killing this marker, but don't worry, Blick Studio markers do come with, or you can order refills for them. I am going back to our lightest color 551 and coloring the top of her hair with this. Even though this is gonna be the area that has the darkest color, since we're going for an ombre effect, I want these white or lighter color highlights to be existent in there. I want to be able to leave areas with the darker color where you can see the lighter color through it and it reads as a highlight. And you guys will see what I'm talking about in a bit, but you guys will also see I am leaving some of the white of the paper still visible. So one trick I have when your alcohol markers, when the brush tip is starting to run kind of low, rather than pushing it and pushing it and ruining that brush nib to the point where you have to replace it, is I'll switch over to the chisel nib. And instances like this where I'm working with a larger image, that works pretty well. So for the top of her head, I'm going in now with B24, our sky blue. And this is kind of our base color now for the hair. And you guys can see I'm leaving some of that original lighter color still visible so that it reads as a highlight. 
I'm also going in and using that same color just to add a little bit of shadow to her eyelashes. And I'm going over the same area again with the same color just to kind of darken up because like I said, each alcohol marker has about three so layers of color. So unfortunately, I lost some of the footage for rendering the hair and I apologize for that. But I basically continue to work the top of the hair the same way I kind of work the bottom of the hair using B24 and B18 as well as Blix Ultramarine. Now for her coat, I wanted a slightly different blue. I wanted a warmer blue. So I'm starting with B60 as our base color. And I'm gonna leave the ribbons and her headband that color since it kind of pops against her hair. But I'm also going to apply this all over as kind of a base color. And one of the reasons you might wanna do that is it does kind of prime the paper so that things are not as prone to streaking as you add on additional layers. So it's really about weighing your pros and cons. You will go through your markers faster if you work like this. However, you're not gonna have as much streakiness in your illustrations. I've then switched over to B63. So a slightly darker warm blue color. So honestly, it was kind of difficult to find the sort of warm blues, almost lavender, but not quite. So I really had to layer my colors and I had to select from a few different brands to be able to find the sort of colors that I was looking for for this illustration. So like I said, we started with B60, we then moved on to B63, and then finally we're going to make the jump, the kind of aggressive jump, to 038 from Blick. And this is a lot darker, much more of a jump than I was really looking for, but like I said, my options in terms of finding colors that work in this kind of blue were pretty limited, so I kind of just did the best that I could and did a lot of layering and a lot of blending. For the even darker shadows, I'm using Blix Lazuli to add in some of those darker shadows and then I'll blend them back out using the base color, which was Blick 038. So now that everything's almost colored, I can go in and kind of reevaluate and rejudge and kind of get a fresh eye on what values need adjusting. And this would be a great opportunity to take a break, go get something to eat, because that way you'll have fresh eyes and you can come back to it and make good judgments about what works, what doesn't work, and what needs improving. And one of the things I decided was that I really needed to readjust the line art a little bit, re-ink some areas, add in some additional black, even add some colorless blender to her eyes to try and get a little bit more of shiny effects going on. Generally, I would love to use like a contrasting sort of color, like a pretty little violet would have been good in her eyes, just to kind of create that almost dichromatic effect. And I probably should have done that instead of the colorless blender in this instance. So this is a good opportunity to just kind of tweak things a little bit, adjust things a little bit. You're not going to be able to make any super major changes at this point, but it is a good opportunity to kind of clean things up and readjust the contrast or maybe add in a few additional details.
So all along I wanted to do snowflakes as part of the background and originally I was going to just do them in gouache but I decided to also use some of our darkest background color PB47 to do some like kind of shadowy snowflakes in the background as well so that it's not just white snowflakes we've got a couple of things going on so I'm sketching in very sketchy they are certainly not my best snowflakes ever but by this point my arthritis was acting up something fierce so I'm really proud that I was able to get this far but um, I'm just kind of sketching in some really simple snowflakes at various sizes all over the background of the illustration making sure that some of them are kind of cut off behind her so it looks as though they're actually falling behind her and I know you guys can't really see it but I still have that washi tape on the paper that's going to give me a really nice clean frame border really seriously kudos to MT washi tape they make some of the best washi tape no sponsorship I just decided to give it a shot and ordered a few rolls of it and it worked way better than I expected because I usually have a problem with the alcohol ink seeping under whatever I'm using and that didn't really happen too much with the MT tape so once I finish doing my snowflakes using alcohol marker I'm going in with some white gouache and a smaller synthetic watercolor round and I'm just kind of sketching in snowflake shapes I'm also going to splatter in a little bit later on some some snow but for right now I'm also going to focus on inking in some of the highlights and some of the details on the character herself. So this is a great opportunity to add some additional highlights to her hair, to add some highlights to her eyelashes and that's going to give us a little bit more definition, to add some highlights into her eyes which is going to give us some more liveliness. This is one of my favorite parts because this is when the piece really pulls together and you really start to get some light and liveliness with the character that you've been coloring all along those final details are just so fun so we're actually painting our house right now and I've noticed that removing the blue painters tape is also the best part because that's when everything really starts to come together So I'm taking my time kind of considering where I want to put in those highlights, where I want to add in those details, just kind of enjoying adding the final touches to this illustration. I'm also adding in some white highlights to the fur or the shirling on her pom-poms and her earmuffs and on her collar. Next, I'm gonna flick a little bit of snow onto the background. So I'm using some watered down gouache and I'm just tapping on my brush. And what that does is it 
flings the gouache and water droplets onto the paper, creating kind of a snowy effect. Now I'm not trying to cover the whole thing, so I'm not really trying to get any on her face, but I did want to get some on the background and maybe some on the edges around her clothes. So really all that's left is to remove that washi tape that I've been talking up so much. And I found that it peeled away very cleanly with no ripping or tearing. I am peeling it away at a 90 degree angle. In case it does tear, it's not going to tear into the illustration itself. I also folded it back on the edges so it wouldn't be getting in the way. So I had to unpeel it from the back before I could remove it from the sides. And together we've completed another alcohol marker illustration. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I had so much fun coloring this cutie. If you're one of my art nerds on Patreon, I have the line art for you. So make sure you check patreon.com slash natosoup where you can download it and print it out. If you're coloring along at home and you want to print this out, I would recommend you print it out using a toner based printer since Copic markers in particular, but alcohol markers in general were originally designed to be safe to use on copies. That's the cope in Copic. I learned that a couple years ago and I thought that was really neat. Of course, as you guys can see, I didn't just use Copic markers for this one. I also used Prismacolor markers and Blick Studio markers. I happen to like all three brands a whole lot. They're the markers that I seem to grab time and time again. So I guess they would be the markers that I would recommend that other marker artists use. I had a blast hanging out with y'all and coloring this today. I sure do miss being able to do alcohol marker tutorials with you guys and I look forward to creating more marker illustrations with y'all in the future. So I hope you guys stay safe, safe, happy, and warm. I almost said sappy, hafe, and warm. I hope you guys stay safe, happy, and warm this winter. And I hope to see you guys again in 2022. I can't believe it's been yet another year already. Time sure has flown. I'll see you guys in 2022 with more tutorials, reviews, and art. So I'll see you guys in 2022. Have a great rest of 2021, y'all. Bye!